Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War I. This is episode number 9 of our Let's Play series, playing as the Allies, and this was taken from a live stream from my Twitch channel from a couple of days back. Uh, so far we are playing, as I said, as the, as the Allies, and or as, in the, or as uh, the Entente, as they were called. And the war is going pretty well for us. Uh, the Western Front stabilized. The Eastern Front's stable, but the Germans are inflicting pretty substantial casualties on us in Poland, although we're holding the line in, in uh, Eastern Prussia. And we're driving deep into sort of southeastern Austria-Hungary. Serbia's hanging in there. We're working on diplomacy or, or whatnot to try and make sure that Bulgaria doesn't get involved. And that's where we're picking things up in the year 1915. So let's go ahead and jump right back into the live stream. Hope you guys enjoy, and I'll catch you guys at the end. I wonder if the Austro-Hungarians got level 2 entrenchments this turn. I can't really tell. Alright, these guys are down to 1 and 2 supply respectively. Not 0 yet. Shift these troops around. So we're wearing down that Johannesburg garrison. Or detachment. Quite finish them off there. Uh, I'll bring these guys south. Come on, you couldn't do that? Alright, so we got them there. Alright, well. So we finished off the Johannesburg uh, detachment. We'll let the first corps south of Johannesburg starve a bit. We didn't lose too badly on that attack. These guys are pretty vulnerable, the, the fourth core here, if the Germans want to advance. But they've shown no aggression on the Königsberg front. Almost destroyed this core here. I mean, anything we can do to inflict losses on the enemy, really. Austro-Hungarian morale's at 25%. I, I really feel like if we took, like, Premzel and Krakow, they might... They might collapse. But, that being said, I don't... I don't really have the resources to do that. Okay. All right, so digging in here, this is mostly, I think, a reinforcement turn. For the Russians on the uh, Eastern Front. We've already invested a lot in R&D for the Russians. Klausenberg might be able to fall next turn. I mean, they don't have a rail line, so unless they counterattack out of Grosswagen. Right, let's attack this core here. At the very least, we'll 
chew up some... enemy artillery ammo that'll limit their effectiveness on attacking us. Attack there. They've used three artillery shells this turn. Four artillery shells. They can't have much ammo left. Shattered. All right, destroyed another Austro-Hungarian core. Morale drops to 24%. Damage that enemy headquarters further. Not thrilled about the idea of sending a pretty weak unit. Wow, we broke through there? We drove that headquarter back in flight. The real concern now becomes when, when does Bulgaria join? Because that will change things pretty quickly and pretty dramatically and open the floodgates and Romania will rapidly, or Serbia will rapidly fall at that point. Um, okay. I think here's the plan. Let's pull this cavalry back to Alexandria. I'm going to send them to try and shore up the situation in Serbia. What about those pesky fellows here? Is this that's Spain? And I'm gonna try and bring these in behind the enemy. Rebels, the Partisans, and see if Fez might be unoccupied. Okay. Don't really want to spend money reinforcing my naval units. I mean, I don't think it's likely that the Ottomans will throw transports together. Uh, perhaps that advance into the Ottoman Empire was unwise. But I just want to destroy stuff. I got to try and hurt their morale. Can these guys dig in again? They can. Um, all right, so we destroyed another an Ottoman detachment. Driving on Trabazon. I mean, we'll see what the Ottomans do here. It's tough terrain to, fi ter to fight in. I can always pull back. Um, right, the Ottoman Navy doesn't really seem to want to fight in the Black Sea, which, frankly, I'm okay with. Um... Meanwhile, they did pull this battleship out of... Uh, 
the Adriatic. I hate the idea of exposing a battleship potentially to torpedoes, though, and my dreadnoughts here are pretty weak. They really need to reinforce. KG Moose, thanks for the follow. Johnny Pot Pie, thank you for the follow. I guess the one positive is I probably could afford to pull a core back or so to deal with Bulgaria, but I'd need at least one core on the Nish line, another core on the Uzbuk line. Those are the two major invasion routes out of Sofia, but I need them to give me a little bit more time. Don't go to war quite yet. Damn it, that did not work well. I was hoping to get a lucky hit there on Debrisen, but it didn't didn't seem to work. Alright, so hopefully we'll get another German core near Masurian Lakes next turn on the eastern front. That kind of does it for there. You know, do we have any What's our seaplane tender? What can they what can they recon? I really wish it would let me. I don't really understand how to trigger the... Really? You're telling me Wilhelmshaven is empty? Where's the goddamn German fleet? Cookshaven is empty too? Oh, I didn't think I would take damage bombarding Wilhelmshaven. I just wanted to hurt their national morale. I didn't... I know the ports shoot back, but I didn't think the actual town did. That's a little silly. Alright, I guess we'll block the Kiel Canal. Get a little bit of a heads up if they try and come through there. Uh, in the meantime, let's let's reduce their supply. Let's put some ships on their ports, directly on their ports, and reduce their income here a bit. It's a zero-value MPP, apparently. Really? Huh. Okay. Whatever you say, game. Uh, one to three. Get them. Don't retreat. They didn't retreat. I'll, I'll kill them. I'll, get, I'll, I'll take that. Uh, all right, so we just destroyed a German cav unit. Let's pull these guys back. Swing this cavalry in. Nope, don't do that. Uh, give me a two to three here. We're going to have to deal with some defensive artillery, but if I can destroy another German unit, great. And if I can eat into their artillery ammunition, which will lessen the effectiveness of any attack anyway. Alright, so we just destroyed another German core here, west of Brussels. feel a little bit weak on the western front here. I mean, they've got a bunch of units that aren't on the front line, apparently. Let's do this. Let's recon here. Then we'll use artillery against them. Which I believe helps. But 
apparently not dramatically, so. Mm. There we go. One to three. Didn't even take a casualty, actually. Finished them off with a battered up core. Advance the Canadian core in to retake that city, then entrench them. Okay. These guys won't be able to entrench, so they may get killed. Same for this cavalry unit. They may immediately destroy two of our own units. Let's advance these guys out of Verdun here. Give me a 1 to 3 on the headquarters. I'll take a 1 to 0 on the headquarters. These French troops in Verdun. Put these British troops north. And then shift these troops into position as well. So we've got three units here near Brussels, which are all not entrenched. Damage does affect supply in terms of like, if a city is damaged, you mean? Does it, does it generate less supply? Yes. Okay, let's reinforce some of these French units. Just in the event that we lose heavy casualties here, I want to make sure my, my troops are ready to rush back in and tidy things up. Damage to an HQ unit. Damage to an HQ unit, to my understanding, reduces their effectiveness in terms of, like, the bonuses they give to the units under their command. I don't fully understand the all of the ins and outs of it, but that is my, my brief understanding. All right. Okay, let's move this British headquarters unit in as well. Uh, all right, uh, move this guy over this way. So these German units are in good shape here near the Brussels area, so they could definitely launch an immediate and determined attack against my cavalry and infantry that sort of kind of broke through here a bit. The The headquarters casualties are going to be tough for them just because it's, you know, headquarters are expensive to replace. Um, I don't want to move into here because that'll, that'll, that gives the enemy three sides on me. I don't want to walk into a into a salient. Okay. I mean, I've got troops behind this line, so if they destroy these three cores, it'll suck, but there's, there's still troops there. Meanwhile... Dappy X, thank you very much for the follow. Can't really do anything in the south there. Got pretty good diversity of unit type. Could use a little more artillery on the front. Let's swap these guys around. I don't, they might get one artillery shell between turns to provide to help these defenders. Um, the French still have 178. What do we want to do with that? We could invest in new units. 
We could drop another one into industrial technology. Production technology doesn't really seem to be going anywhere. Actually, you know what we should do? Let's... Let's try and keep Bulgaria out of the war just a little bit. By the way, the U.S. doesn't seem to be swinging at all. They're still pretty content in their uh, neutrality. But we'll try and keep Bulgaria out of the war for a little bit. That's maybe going way overboard with the investment, but apparently a 25% chance of success in swinging them back toward the uh, Entente. Uh, do the Serbians have... Is it 50 for them, too? They do have some diplomatic chits. So it's a tw it's now a 30% chance that we keep them out... Keep them... Or swing them back toward the neutrality. Alright, so I should get these two cores on transports next turn. And I don't know what really affecting the supply will do if these guys don't generate income. No, the Swiss are not aligned with Germany. The Swiss are neutral. Okay. Got a little bit of money. We can reinforce that battleship slightly. Alright, so with that being said, another reasonably good turn for us. We'll see how things play out in our next turn, see if we can't destroy this German core near Masurian Lakes. Death by a thousand cuts is the is the rule of thumb in World War One, I, I guess. Um, these guys are all dug in, they're reinforced as best we can. So let's go ahead and move forward to August of 1915, the one-year mark for the war. I mean, I enjoy it. The Norwegian complain after intent attacks on their merchantmen. Okay. I enjoy the game. I mean, it's to each their own, right? Like, not everybody finds the same thing fun. But at least in, in my case, it's interesting and surprisingly... Um, complex strategy game. Austro-Hungarian morale falls below 25%. Anti-submarine warfare level 1 for the British. That's great news. Trench warfare for the French. That is excellent news. The Russians make serious progress, but they don't quite get, to the, get there quite yet. So we'll see... I feel like I, I kind of overextended in a couple of places. So we'll have to see if that comes back to, to bite us. Germans are coming out of the Kiel Canal, huh? Okay, they've got a bunch of subs, some destroyers coming at us. They're going to operate that artillery and headquarters units away from the front. That will open up offensive lanes for their units there. They can now advance through those hexes and attack us all along that three hex advance into Belgium. Meanwhile, they're finally shifting troops north toward Masurian Lakes, which is interesting to say the least. They reinforce the troops at Klausenberg. They can't fully reinforce them, but they do get them back up to level six. They move that destroyer out of the Kiel Canal, so presumably that'll open up space for a battleship or another ship to come through the canal. Intercepting some German attack aircraft there in the south of France. Alright, that Russian unit's dead. At least I thought it was. Okay. They're gonna begin their counteroffensive here.
We're actually inflicting quite a few casualties on the enemy, on, despite the fact that we're maybe not as teched up as I would like to be. They're losing about as good as they're getting, which, I mean, again, World War I on the defensive, you would, you would think that would be the case, but especially for the Russian troops, they're, they're giving a pretty good, good show. I'm really hoping we get an announcement at the end of the turn saying diplomatic success in Bulgaria for the uh, Entente. That swings them toward the Entente. I think we're probably on the inevitable march to war. They're probably moving 4% toward the Central Powers every turn at this point. There are certain countries which seem to always join certain sides on sort of a ticking timer. You can slow that or speed it up based on your own investments, but... It does seem kind of inevitable for certain countries. Meanwhile, they didn't destroy the French unit there. I would have thought they would have. Unrestricted attacks on trade in the St. George affects British morale. All right, so Germany is using unrestricted submarine warfare, which is going to start pissing off the Americans. The Lusitania sinks. So... Two hundred thousand Welsh miners strike over pay. So it doesn't look like we got any diplomatic success in Bulgaria. They were at eighty-three percent last turn. Let's see where they're at this turn. Um, some new units. Oh, I forgot about the French colonials that arrived. Bulgaria's at 73%. Interesting. Were they at 73 before? Did I mistake 73 and 83? So they didn't move that turn. Okay. So, well, first things first, let's... some damage to these German ships here. Shit. Well, we drove them into port. That wasn't quite what I wanted to do. So we're damaging these German, I'm assuming, destroyers. All right, so we just destroyed another enemy destroyer. I'm going to pull my fleet back now. It seems like it's a little bit at risk. Get a shield of lighter vessels around these somewhat damaged battle cruisers. Assuming the German High Seas fleet may come out and play. So let's not give them too juicy a target to hit. Okay. All right, we're going to pull these troops back. I nearly got wiped out. That is tempting, though. Really? They couldn't destroy him? Alright, so we wiped out that German core. Without loss, too. Cavalry can't entrench, though. Is 
in theory, we could try and break out here. Let's see if we can't get another German core here. Attack, shattered, another German core destroyed on the east on the west front, so that was two last turn, two more this turn. The casualties are really starting to mount on the German forces. They were at what, seventy some odd how many turns ago? They're at sixty nine right now. Let's pull these guys back, shift these troops forward. Can they dig in or did they move too much? They moved too much. Damn. Um well, let's... Nice, we got another German core. All right, so we've... I mean, their their line is starting to look a little bit like Swiss cheese here on the on the Western Front. Okay. These guys dig in? So if they swap? Yes, okay, good. So we can dig them in. So the only unit that's not dug in are these two. Take a few casualties that turn. But overall, I mean, I think the Germans are going to be a little bit panicky. They're going to have to race additional troops to the front. So that's a good result here on the Western Front this turn. Um... You give me a one to four on this Austro-Hungarian core. I'll take it. Couldn't quite finish that guy off. Well, we badly shot up another Austro-Hungarian core core here near Belgrade, but we couldn't finish it off. Okay, take those troops in. Pull this detachment back to Gardenish. Um, all right. So, God, that's kind of disappointing. It would have been nice to finish that guy off, but in the event that we can't, uh, zero to two, I'll take that. Zero to two. All right, so we will take Klausenberg. Good result. Oh, shit. Undo. All right. 
We've got a 1 to 4 against that German Cavalry Corps. Okay, so we are threatening to Briesen. We just destroyed a German Cavalry Corps near it. Also destroyed the Austro-Hungarian armor. Spoiler alert in France, the bad guys are supposed to turn your flank going through Belgium. Yeah, that didn't quite work out that way. I am aware that was the plan, however. Okay. These guys are dug in. This core almost got obliterated. I hate to spend 100 points reinforcing one unit on the front, but you got to do it sometimes. Meanwhile, the Germans do seem to be switching troops east, perhaps, to try and help the troops at uh, the fortifications of the Messerian Lakes. However, they're at zero supply, so I'm going to try and finish them off now. effectively attack them. Alright, finish those guys off. Another national morale bonus. Move that detachment in here. So the Masurian Lake fortification is reduced. We'll move this garrison over this way. Okay. Yes, it is 1915 Captain Failure. It's July of 17th of 1915. So more German cores getting destroyed here. Down to 66 units. We've destroyed quite a few German units this turn. And at this point, the Germans could elect to attack east, I suppose. We'd be in a little bit of a vulnerable position if they move east to try and re reclaim Eastern Prussia. Part of me wants to see if we can advance these troop w troops west to try and turn the flank of... Uh, I just don't know the supply situation if it would really warrant it. But let's try and send these guys in this direction. See if we can't freak out the Austrians. If we can get in toward their rear, take Arad. But I have to think that Klausenberg, that's going to be the final nail in the... Romanian coffin here. Can we purchase anything with the Serbians? A cavalry division? Or a detachment? Artillery would be nice, but that's expensive. We're already maxed out on cores, so we might as well, guess I guess, get a cavalry detachment for Serbia. With the money that we have. I've already done that, Neuhauser, so I've got, uh, what, like, what is that, 
250 MPPs currently invested on trying to keep Bulgaria neutral. At some point, it might be worth pulling back some of the uh, economic support, I think, for the... What is that, a cruiser? But yeah, at some point it might be worth pulling back some of the economic support for the Serbians. Oh, great. An enemy pre-dreadnought. So that Russian cruiser is going to get whomped. Rostov in the Black Sea? Huh. Okay. I mean, I'd like to try and attack. Like, again, at this point, with Austro-Hungarian morale down to 22%, I've got to think we could knock him out pretty soon. All right, let's pull these troops back. Do I think I can capitulate Aust the Austrians by 1916? I mean, a lot's going to depend on what Bulgaria does. I definitely think it's possible, but if Bulgaria enters the war soon, that's going to complicate things pretty substantially. Going to bring the Indian Cavalry Corps to the Balkans. Okay, we already did the West Front, right? Bringing the British Army across. Okay. So the British have some destroyers, right? Where are they at? Let's get some of these destroyers into port so we can upgrade their ASW tech. I don't want to leave the northern blockade completely open, so we're going to have to stagger some of that. Um, meanwhile, let's purchase some new units for the British. Give me another torpedo boat. ASW Tech. Research for the British. Infantry war weapons already being worked on. Command and control should be something I focus on. Trench warfare. Let's dump another chit into that. Okay. French at 330. They've got a few units that are pretty badly bled down, so let's reinforce those. All right, they still have 140 left. So for the French, dump another one into industrial technology, I think, to try and get the economy up. Do they have to do anything else, like to entrench to level two? Or do they just automatically do it?
Oh, it looks like they already do it. Okay, that's good. Um, so that's going to do it for this turn, I think. Uh, let's actually check Morocco. So, we did deploy some British troops down here. We're going to move them, see if I can't... They might run out of supply, but I'm going to see if I can flank Fez. Crush that rebellion. Might be worth sending a British corps down that way and then get them into uh, the Middle East or something. I really should be trying to advance up through Iraq against the Ottomans. That's probably a good way to drop their morale. We haven't really been fighting the Ottomans all that much. All right, everybody, and that's going to do it for this episode of Strategic Command World War I. We're about to end our turn, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this episode up. Hope you guys enjoy, and stay tuned for next time. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.